Hi, my name is Lizzie. I want to show you how easy it is to use Relational AI's native app on Snowpark Container Services to understand customer behavior using a knowledge graph. So let's imagine for a moment that we work for a company that owns a P2P payment app that lets users send and receive money. All of the data is in Snowflake, and it's basically just one table. It contains transactions between users. There are three columns. We have a source, a target, and the amount that was being transferred. Our goal is now to find some new revenue streams and to boost the overall user engagement on our platform. We want to do this without moving any data out of the data cloud. Built a Snowflake native app on Snowpark Container Services, Relational AI runs fully embedded within Snowflake as a relational knowledge graph coprocessor. In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how easy it is to derive additional knowledge about the users and their activities on our platform using some basic aggregation functions. We we'll then use this newly derived knowledge to first find communities among our users, and then to identify users who we would want to target with our marketing campaigns to help boost their revenue. So let's jump to the code and do some magic. I'm using a Jupyter Notebook here to interact with Relation AI. I could have also used other tools such as VS Code or the new notebook feature within SnowSight. Let's start by importing the Python libraries that we will need, including the Relation AI Python package. This package is a declarative query builder that lets you model relationships between entities in your data cloud and extract valuable insights. Next, we need to connect a model to the data source in Snowflake and tell the relational AI package that we want to use the data from the user transactions table. Let me run some simple queries to check that everything is set up properly and get to know our data. We have 41 transactions in our table, and you can see that there's a user one transferring some amount to user two. So let's create a conceptual model when grounded with our data. We do this by defining two types. Types represent real world entities. Given that we are currently looking at transactions between two people, we define both a user and a transaction type. We can now map our data to a data model by writing rules. Rules define the logic that governs the model and are written using the relational AI query builder syntax. We create a transaction for each row in our input table. A user could either be the source or the target of a transaction, so we need to make sure that if a user ID shows up in either of these two columns, we create an instance of the type user for it. Users represent the nodes in our graph, and we're going to use the transactions between users to form our edges. So let's visualize our graph. As you will see soon, we can add various properties to both the nodes and the edges that will make a graph look much more interesting and will help us derive useful information. For now, this visualization mainly shows how the money flows between users. So let's try to see if we can derive some useful insights by augmenting a knowledge graph by writing some business rules. Let's start by writing a simple count aggregation, which surprisingly can give us a lot of information already. For instance, it could help us identify the most active edges, so the connections that are the most important due to the frequency of transactions between users. It's also very useful to know how often a user receives money from a particular sender. This can help us understand how strong the relationship is between the two users. So let me visualize a graph again, now using the knowledge about how strong the connections between users are. We are marking the size of the edge to be proportional to the number of transactions between the users. And I'm also additionally going to mark strong connections where more than one transaction took place between two users in red. This provides us already with some useful insights, but let's think of more data points which would provide a better understanding of our user behavior. For instance, we could imagine that the amount of money flowing between users could provide some very valuable insight and could indicate the value of the relationships. A simple sum aggregation can help us with that and allows us to identify the most valuable relationships as those between two users whose total amount of the money sent from one to another is the highest. Additionally, to better understand the full picture, we could query for each user the total amount of money sent, received, as well as the net amount. This can help us gain insights on the users that are receiving more than they send and where the money might be leaving our platform. These might be interesting users for targeted marketing campaigns. We can take a look now at how our graph changes if we use the transaction volume as the edge thickness instead of the count of transactions. Red connections are still marking the ones that appear more frequently. And now the picture demonstrates that the number of transactions is not enough to tell the whole story, since we can clearly see that the thick edge between user with ID 1 and user with ID 3 was not considered a strong connection, as it was a one-time transfer, but of a much larger sum. A more powerful tool that we have at our disposal are graph algorithms. 
I'm now going to use the InfoMap algorithm, which is a powerful tool when it comes to identifying communities in a network of connected users. Relational AI provides native support for common graph analytics tasks like centrality, community detection, similarity, and path analysis, and leverages a suite of advanced algorithms to uncover hidden patterns and relationships within our data. To run one of these algorithms, all we need to do is create a graph and then run one line of code where we use the compute object and choose the algorithm that we're interested in and then let Relational AI do all the heavy lifting. So let's take a look at the communities that we just found. As you can see, we can use the community property of each node to color it. The final question that we are interested in today is, who are most influential users are in a network? Does who to target for ad campaigns to be most effective? This is where centrality algorithms come into the picture, and Relational AI supports a number of those. I'm going to use the eigenvector centrality algorithm here. Before applying it, we need to decide how to define the most influential users. Is it those who use our platform a lot or those who have transferred the largest amounts of money? We can either use the transaction count per user connection as the weight of the graph or the transaction volume. I'm going to use the transaction volume as our main metric. So let me create a final visualization where I make the size of the nodes proportional to the eigenvector scores based on the transaction volume. We also keep the different community colors. Pretty cool, right? We only had three data points as input to our analysis, two users that acted as a source and a target of a transaction, as well as the amounts that got transferred. We used this data to create a graph, augmented a knowledge graph with additional data using business rules to determine the strength of the connection between the two users, and then ran graph algorithms to detect communities within a user base, as well as users that we can now target for our marketing campaigns. There's only one step left, and that's about making the data available to other Snowflake users within a company. We have multiple ways to do this. We can either write query results directly back to a Snowflake table, or we can create a stored procedure. I hope you enjoyed this little demo. I'm really excited to see what kind of applications you are going to build on top of Snowflake using relational AI.